Assalamu alaikum and good morning everyone. Today I'm going to deliver one topic, one lecture topic regarding the histology of the liver, biliary tract and also the pancreas. So there are three components that I'm going to touch today. Okay, the first one is a liver, the second one is a biliary tract and the third one is a pancreas. Okay, so this is the outline of my uh, presentation. The, three, the four components I'm going to discuss today on the liver, biliary tract, gallbladder, and also the pancreas. Okay, so I will only cover the histological part. Okay, first I'm going to discuss on the histology of the liver. Okay, for the liver, there are three ways to describe the structure of the liver in terms of the functional unit. Okay, the first one, okay, we describe is based on the classic lobule. And the second one is a portal lobule. And the last one is a liver acinus. Okay, so you have to remember the three ways of describing the structure of the liver in terms of its functional unit. The first one is classic lobule. Second is a portal lobule. And the third one is a liver, liver acinus. Okay, so as you can see here, this is the picture that shows the classic lobule. And the second one is a portal lobule. So, and the third one, the last one is a liver acinus. So you can see the shape of the, each of the functional unit is here is a different. Okay, we're going to discuss further later. Okay, we start to discuss on the classic lobule first. Okay, what is the classic lobule? The classic lobule is the traditional way to describe the organizations of the liver parenchyma. So there is the traditional way lah, okay, to describe the organizations of the liver parenchyma. So uh, the classic lobule it is based on the distribution of the branches of the portal vein and hepatic artery within the liver. Okay. So uh, actually this is the reference points lah. Okay, this is based on the distribution of the uh, branches of the portal veins and hepatic artery within the liver. And also the pathway that blood from, uh, that follow as it ultimately perfuses the liver cells. Okay, so it means that how the, the, the blood will perfuse, uh, ultimately, okay, perfuse the liver cells. Okay, it's based on these two components. Okay. Okay, you can see here, Okay, uh, this is the classic lobule. So you can see at the angle here, we have the portal canal. Okay. And then in the center here, we have the central vein. Okay, this is the uh, the shape of the classic lobule. It is in the form of the uh, hexagon. Okay. So if you, okay, if you try to uh, enlarge this picture and then can have this kind of a, uh, this kind of uh, tissue, lah, okay? the hexagon shape of the tissue. So you can see here in the center, we have the uh, terminal hepatic venule, the central vein, okay? the central vein. And then at the periphery, we have the portal vein. Okay. Okay, so the classic lobule is the hexagonal mass of tissue. So just now I have mentioned earlier of my part of my lecture, it is a hexagon in shapes. Okay. It's a compost of the mass of tissue, hexagon in shapes. And uh, it is consists of stack of anatomizing spread of the hepatocyte. So if you see from this picture, you can see the the, the plate of hepatocyte is anatomous uh, to each other. Okay. Uh, consists of stack of anatomizing plate of hepatocyte. Okay. And it is about one cell thick and separated by the anatom anastomosing uh, system of sinusoid. Okay, so in between here we have the hepatic sinusoid. You can see here that we have a space there. So uh, this uh, plate of uh, sino, uh, the plate of the hepatocyte is uh, separated by the anastomosing okay? system of sinusoid. Okay, and then the terminal hepatic venule or the central vein in the center here. Okay, actually it's located at the center of the lobule. Lah. Okay, it is uh, located at the center of the lobule. And the plate of cell plus the sinusoid, it radiates from the central vein to the periphery. You can see here, the plate of the cell here, the plate of the hepatocyte and the sinusoid, it radiates huh, toward the periphery, okay, from the center toward the periphery, okay? Radiate, okay? Going from here to, to the periphery. 
And then the portal area or portal canal. So you can see here the portal area or the portal canal at the angle here, at the angle of the hexagon. Okay, at the angle of the hexagon. Uh, <clears throat> it is it is composed of loose stromal connective tissue that continues with the fibrous capsule of the liver. Okay, so mean that the uh, the the loose connective tissue that we have in the portal areas here in the portal canal. Okay, in the portal canal here, it continues with the fibrous capsule of the liver. Okay. And the portal area here, or the portal canal, is characterized by the presence of the portal triad. And there are three components that present here. We have the hepatic artery, the triad. We have the portal vein and also the bowel duct. And then we also have the space of, uh, space of mole. What is space of mole? Okay, space of mole at the edge of the portal canal. Okay, at the edge of the portal canal between the connective tissue stroma and the hepatocyte. Okay. Uh, okay, you can see here, this is the space of mole. Okay, just now, the definition of space of mole is actually is at the edge of the portal canal. So you can see here, uh, we have the portal, uh, portal canal here, right? Okay, between the connective tissue stroma. Okay, maybe here we have the connective tissue stroma. Okay, and then we have the, uh, uh, the hepatocyte. Okay. You can see here this is the hepatocyte right the hepatocyte okay and then between the connective tissue prostoma we have the space of the mole so the, the connective tissue prostoma maybe is located in, inside here lah, okay and then uh, between here and here we have the space of mole okay okay Okay, uh, the classic lobule in some species, for example, the pigs, uh, the classic lobule is easily recognized. Okay, in pigs, uh, easily, easily, easily recognized because the portal area are connected by relatively thick layer of connective tissue. Okay, okay so mean that the portal area is connected by the relatively thick layer of connective tissue. So you can see here, uh, this is the pig liver. Okay, you can see the portal area here is connected by the thick layer of connective tissue. So it's a, it's a very obvious. So the hexagon shapes of the, uh, of the classic lobule is very obvious compared to this one. This is the human liver. So it's a bit not very obvious lah. Okay, so you can see here this is the connective tissue that connect the, uh, portal area. Okay, and the connective tissue here is very thick. So that's why it's very clear. It's very obvious. Okay. And for in human is very little, uh, uh, very little interlobular connective tissue. Okay, interlobular so tissue. So it's not easily recognized. Lah. So it's not very easy, very easy to recognize the hexagon hexagon shapes of the classic lobule. Okay. But compared to the pig liver, it's very, very nice and very uh, clear. Uh, very easy, to, it's very easy to identify. Lah. Okay, just now we have discussed on the uh, classic lobule. Now we're going to, the, to discuss on the portal lobule. Okay. Uh, portal lobule emphasizes the exocrine function of the liver hmm, based on the bowel secretions. Okay, emphasize on the bowel secretion. Hmm, emphasize on the exocrine function of the liver. So its morphologic axis is the interlobular bowel duct of the portal triad of the classic lobule. Okay, so the morphological axis is the interlobular border of the portal triad of the classic lobule. And the outer margin is the imaginary line drawn between the three central veins that are closest to the portal triad. So if you see here, uh, at the center here, in the middle, we have the morphologic axis, the interlobular border. Okay, in the center, we have the interlobular border. And then uh, the outer margin here is the imaginary line. So you try to draw a line here. Okay, get a line, uh, draw a line, and uh, we try to connect the three central vein. Okay, we have the this is the first central vein, second one, and the third one. So try to connect dot of the 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 the, the, the central vein here. Okay, that uh, this central vein actually is closest to the portal triad. Okay, so uh, roughly the Whenever you uh, draw a line here and then try to connect all the uh, the, the three central vein here, so uh, it is at roughly uh, triangular block of tissue lah. Okay, triangular block of tissue. Compared to the classical lob lobule just now, it is a hexagon, but for the portal lobule, it's a triangular in shapes. Okay, it emphasizes on the uh, function of the liver, exocrine function of the liver lah, bowel secretion. Okay. 
Okay, how about the liver acinus? Okay, the, the, the liver acinus is the structural unit that provide the best correlation between the blood perfusions, metabolic activity, and the liver pathology. Okay, so it described the uh, it, uh, describe the correlation between the blood perfusions, metabolic activity, and liver pathology. And the liver acinus is lozenge shapes. So you can see here, if you see from the early part of my uh, 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 picture here, you can see it is a lozenges in shapes, uh, elliptical okay, lozenges in shapes. Okay. Mm. Um, okay. Uh, and it represents the smallest functional unit of the hepatic parenchyma. Okay, you have to remember that this one is uh, it represents the smallest functional unit of the hepatic parenchyma. Okay, the short axis of the acinus is defined by the terminal branch of the portal triad. Okay, the short axis. So if you see here, we have the short axis here. Okay, this is the short axis. Okay, this is the short axis, and this is the long axis. So the short axis is actually is the uh, the uh, terminal branch of the portal triad, okay. Terminal branch of the portal triad, okay. Uh, they lie along the border between the two classic lobules. So you can see here, okay. This is the uh, classic table, the first classic table, and this is the second classic table. So you try to join this one, okay. The two right, there are two uh, portal triad here. Okay, try to connect here. So this is the uh, the short axis, okay. The short axis for these two uh, classic table lobule, right? Okay, this is the uh, short axis. And then for the long axis, it's a line that drawn between the two central veins. So you can see here, this is the central vein in the middle here. So you try to draw uh, uh, from the two central vein. Okay, this is the long axis. Okay, the closest to the short axis. Okay, this is the closest short axis to the this long axis, right? Okay, okay this is the long axis. Okay, so I hope you know the, uh, how you draw the short axis and how you draw the long axis. Okay. So you can see here, this is the, uh, the lazy liver acinus, okay? Okay, the hepatocytes in each liver acinus are described as being arranged into three concentric elliptical zones. Okay, we have the three zones here, okay? And this zone is surrounded by the short axis. So you can see here, this is short axis, right? So this zone, elliptical zone here, it surround the short axis, okay? Now zone number one, zone number two, and zone number three. Okay, zone number one is closest to the short axis and the blood supply from the penetrating branches of the portal vein and the hepatic artery. Okay, zone number one here, okay, it closes to the uh, short axis, right? Zone number one. And then it is a, uh, and the blood supply is from the penetrating branch of the portal vein, from the portal vein and also the hepatic artery. Because at the portal right here, we have the portal vein and also the hepatic artery, right? So the, uh, the so it get, get its blood supply from this, uh, from here, or from the portal triad here, okay? Closest, because it is closest to the short axis, okay? And the uh, zone number three is the farthest, uh, is the far away from the short axis. Uh, definitely, if you see here, this is zone number three, is far away from the short axis here, right? Okay, and, but it, it is closest to the terminal hepatic venule, okay? But somehow, this the zone number three here, it close to the uh, terminal hepatic venule, okay? Of the central vein, okay? Uh, for the zone number two, it lies. Zone number two, it lies between the zone number one and number three. But somehow, it, the, it we don't have a uh, clear boundary, no sharp boundary lah between this zone number one, zone number two, and zone number three. Okay. 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 So this is another picture just to show you how the liver, uh, the arrangement of the liver acinus. Okay. Okay. Uh, so that is the functional union of the liver, how we describe the liver based on the classic level, portal level, and also the liver acinus. Okay, now we're going to uh, discuss on the, the whole part of the liver. Okay, so the structural component of the liver include the parenchyma, okay, the structural component. Uh, okay, the first one is parenchyma, connective tissue stroma, sinusoidal capillary or sinusoids, and perisinusoidal space or space of disease. So this is the structural component of the liver. Uh, liver. Okay. Okay. For, okay. We start to discuss on the parenchyma. Okay. For the parenchyma, it consists of the organized plat of hepatocyte. Okay. There is the component of the parenchyma. Okay. Organized plat of the hepatocyte. 
In adult, okay, usually we have a one cell thick, which is separated by the sinusoid. And that's is in case for the adult. But for the young individual up to six years old, the hepatocytes are arranged in pair of two cell ticks. Okay. For adult, one cell tick. But for young individual up to six years old, the hepatocytes are arranged in pair of two cell ticks. Okay. Okay, that is the parenchyma. Okay, the component of the parenchyma, hepatocyte, okay, the liver cell. So the hepatocyte, the liver cells is large, polygonal in shapes, okay, multiple shapes, polygonal in shapes, okay, large. Okay, it's constituted of 80% of the cell population of the liver. 80% of the cell of the liver actually is, belongs to the hepatocyte. And for the nucleus, it is large and central. And many, uh, many, uh, many of the hepatocytes are binucleate, uh, binucleated, or it has uh, two nucleus. Okay, the cytoplasm usually is generally acidophilic in color. As acidophilic usually is pinkish in color. Okay, uh, in for convenience, it is described as having six surfaces. So for the hepatocyte itself, it has six surfaces. Okay, the two surfaces face the perisinusoidal space. Okay. Okay, the, the two surface, uh, fa the two surfaces uh, face the perisinusoidal space, uh, the basal surface, uh, and four surfaces face the neighboring hepatocyte uh, and the bar canaliculi, two lateral and two apical surfaces. Okay, so you can see here. Okay, just now I mentioned the two surfaces facing to uh, toward the perisinusoidal space. Okay, if you see here. Okay, the perisinusoidal space. What is the perisinusoidal space that I have mentioned earlier? Okay, the perisinusoidal space is space of DC, right? With the P capital letter here. Okay, you can see here, this is the perisin. Uh, this is the space of DC. So this surface is facing toward the space of DC and this surface is facing toward the uh, space of DC. Okay. And the four surfaces facing the neighboring hepatocyte lah, and the bar canaliculi. So, so you can, you can, you can see here, okay. These two, uh, these two surfaces is facing toward the bal canaliculi. Okay, this is the bal. This is the bal canaliculi. Okay, and it also facing toward the the adjacent hepatocyte. Okay. 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 The, uh, the, 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 that is the first component of the liver. Okay. Just now we have the parenchyma and then the hepatocyte. Okay, the second component of the liver is a connective tissue stroma. Okay, for the connective tissue stroma, it continues with the fibrous capsule of lesions, visceral peritoneum surround the lesion capsule. Okay, so uh, what are the content of the connective tissue stroma? We have the blood vessel, nephritic vessels, and bulk duct travel within the connective tissue stroma. Okay. Okay, you can see here, this is the lesion capsule. Okay. This is the Gleason capsule. Okay, so just now we mentioned that the connective tissue stroma uh, it continues with the fibrous capsule of Gleason. Okay, so you can see here, this is the connective tissue stroma, right? So it continues with the Gleason capsule. Okay. Okay, the third component of the liver is a sinusoidal capillary or sinusoids. Okay, for the <coughs> sinusoidal capillary or sinusoid, is the vascular channel between the plant of the hepatocyte. Okay, there are two types of cell that we have here. Okay, we have the discontinuous uh, epithelium. Okay, and then we have the stellate sinusoidal macrophage or couple cell. Okay, this is actually one type of the, uh, the macrophage that present in the liver cell. Okay, okay. So uh, just to recap back, the sinusoidal capillary is a vascular channel. Okay. This is the main point that you have to remember. Remember, okay, it's a vascular channel. Okay. Um, sinusoids uh, it line with a thin discontinuous uh, endothelium. Okay, and discontinuous basal lamina lah. Okay, sinusoid is aligned with a thin uh, by a thin discontinuous endothelium. So the, the endothelium or the endothelium, okay, the capillary, the type of capillary that we have here is a discontinuous type of the uh, capillary. Okay. Um, and this is uh, how we, uh, we we know that this is sinusoid is uh, actually discontinuous. Okay. 
So this is the evidence. Eh? This is the, the, the characteristic that carried by the this sinusoid. Okay, we have the, uh, the this sinusoid, it has a large fenestra, uh, fenestra. Okay, the fenestra actually is gap. Okay, it's a large gap. Okay, and this fenestra is, uh, ab, uh, there is an absence of the diaphragm. Okay, without diaphragm. Okay, uh, this uh, large fenestra is actually within the endothelial cells. Okay, and sorry, um, the, 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 the sorry. I just uh, want to uh, correct my words. Okay, the large fenestra is actually is the like a hall. Okay, a hall is uh, like a hall that no, that present within the endothelial cells. This is not large large gaps. Large gaps if we have the its own characteristic here. Okay, the last large, large fenestra is actually is a, like a hall within the endothelial cells. Okay, so I will try to correct back my words. Okay, large fenestra is not a gap. Eh? Okay, L gaps is different thing. Fenestra is actually is a uh, hall, okay, and this uh, large fenestra is a hall that look that present within the endothelial cells, and the special about the large fenestra fenestra uh, fenestra here it is does not have a diaphragm without the diaphragm, okay. So I recorrect my word, okay. Large fenestra is the hall that presents within the endothelial cells, okay. It's not gap. Eh? And then the second characteristic of this concern side is the large gap. Okay, the gaps actually is a uh, the the space between the neighboring endothelial cells. So uh, for the sinusoid, it has a large gaps. So mean that the space between the uh, between the neighboring cells is very large. Okay, so this is the characteristic of the sinusoid. It has a large fenestra and the large gaps. Okay, so I correct my words. Huh? I correct my sent, uh, statement just now. Large fenestra is hall the presence within the endothelial cells. And the large gaps actually is the space between the endothelial cells. Okay. Okay. Uh, for the other cell that we have in the sinusoid, uh, is a standard sinusoidal macrophage or cuffo cell. Okay. Uh, cuffo cell is a specialized cell cells that associated with the endothelial linings. Okay. And uh, the characteristic of the cuffle cell is a large, it has a larger nucleus and paler cytoplasm. So if you see here from this picture, you can see here, this is the cuffle cell. So it has a large nucleus, right? Large nucleus, okay? Uh, and pale cytoplasm. Cytoplasm is paler, pale, okay? If you see here, this is the endothelium. So you can see here, this is the endothelium. So there is a large gap in between, uh, uh, there is large gap of space in between the endothelium. So this is the characteristic of the discontinuous type of the uh, capillary, okay? Okay. So you can see here, this is the sinusoid lah. Inside here, we have the red blood cell, right? Okay. And then we have the, this is the hepatocyte lah. H is the hepatocyte, okay? Okay, uh, the fourth component of the liver is the perisinusoidal space or space of DC. Okay, uh, the space of DC is lie between the sinusoidal endotheliums and hepatocyte. So this is the space of DC. So you can see here, this is the space of DC. Okay, it lie between the uh, hepatocyte and the endothelium. Okay, okay, lie between the sinusoid. Of uh, and it's in the sodium endothelium and the hepatocyte. Okay, it's a space. Okay, okay. Uh, for the characteristic of the perisinusoidal space or space of DC, okay, it lies between the basal surface of the hepatocyte. So you can see here, this is the basal surface of the hepatocyte. Okay, uh, and the basal surface of the endothelial cells. Okay, and we have the this is the basal surface of the endothelial cells, right? Okay, and then we also have the added part, uh, part here is a couple cell, okay? Okay, okay, lie between the basal surface of hepatocyte and the basal surface of endothelial cells plus couple cells, huh? okay? That line the sinusoid. And for the perisinusoidal space, it is small, okay? Uh, irregular microvilli project into this space uh, from the basal surface of the hepatocyte. If you see from this picture, you can see here there is the irregular microvilli that project into the space of the DC, right? Okay. And then, uh, what is the importance of this uh, irregular microvilli? So, it actually, is 
to increase the surface area. And there is no significant barrier exists between the sinusoid and hepatocyte. No significant barrier because of the discontinuous endothelial layer. Okay. And uh, what is the function of the perisinusoidal, perisinusoidal space? Actually, it's just, it, become, uh, it, uh, it acts as the site of the exchange of material between the blood and the liver cells. So where the protein and liver protein synthesized by the hepatocyte are transferred into the this space. Okay. Mm -hmm. The uh, site of exchange of material between the blood and liver cell, where the protein and liver pro uh, lipoprotein yeah, synthesized by the hepatocyte will be transferred into this space. Okay. And then uh, we have another type of cell here. We have the hepatic cell, uh, hepatic stellate cell or ETO cell. Okay, you see from this picture. Okay, you can see here this is the ETO cell. Okay. Okay, the ETO cells it found in the perisinusoidal space uh, and it will uh, it filled with the cytoplasmic vacuole. Okay, so you can see here it uh, filled with the cytoplasmic vacuole, right? So, um, what is the function of the head ETO cell? It stores the vitamin A. And in the pathologic conditions, this ETO cell will differentiate into the myofibroblast and synthesize the collagen. Okay, this is uh, another picture just to show you the ETO cell. We have the liver cell or hepatocyte. Okay, and then we have the uh, space of DC here. Okay, that line uh, that, uh, that uh, located in between the hepatocyte and endothelium as well as the plasma cell. So you have the space of DC. Okay, so any product that produced by the liver cell will be uh, transported here. Lah. Okay, okay, and then uh, okay, you can see here there is a large gap in between the uh, endothelial cells. Okay, okay, this is picture just to show you how actually the appearance of the uh, the liver, uh, the, the, the yeah, the liver cell, okay, or uh, and also the the other structure uh, under the electron microscope. So we can see here. So this is the hepatic liver, uh, hepatic stellate cell or ETO cell, okay. Um, okay, and then uh, we have the uh, hepatocyte microvilli. You can see hepat uh, hepatocyte microvilli get projected into the space of DC, and then we have the cuffer cell, and then we have the hepatic sinusoid here. Okay, this is the pathway of the blood vessel of the parenchyma, lah. okay, from the hepatic artery and portal vein toward the uh, interlobular vessel, hmm, larger portal canal. Okay, it, it, then it then into uh, okay from here going to the larger interlobular vessel or larger portal canal, and then uh, some of some of it we go into the distributing vessel or periphery of the lobule, and then we go to the sinusoid. And then from the larger here, also some of it will go to the smaller interlobular vessels, interlobular vessels, the smaller portal canal that will finally go into the sinusoid. Lah. And then go into the sino, uh, central vein, okay, the terminal hepatic venule. Lah. And then uh, from the central vein, we go to the sublobular vein and then go to the hepatic vein. Finally, we will go to the inferior vena cava. Okay. So this is the pathway. So you can see here, this is the pathway. Lah. Okay. Okay, so you can see how the blood is being moved, okay, from here toward here, from the, uh, from the portal triad here, right, from the portal vein, okay, toward the central vein, okay. Okay, it will be drained into here, okay, from the blood flow. So this is the, how the blood flow is actually uh, happen, okay. But the bar flow is opposite, right? I can see here, the bar flow is opposite, okay. Okay, the blood vessel of the parenchyma. We have the central vein has a thin wall. Okay, okay, the central vein has a thin wall. Uh, its endothelial lining is surrounded by the uh, small amount of the sparingly arranged connective tissue fiber. So you can see here, this is the central vein. Okay, so it it has thin wall, right? So it has thin wall. Okay, and uh, then sublobular vein. We have the sublobular vein. More larger vein, it has a distinct layer of collective tissue fiber, okay, both collagenous and elastic, just external to the endothelium. Okay, here there are no valve huh, in the hepatic vein. See, they, this is more important that you have to remember. Okay, no, 
valve in the hepatic gland. Okay, this is the terminal, term, terminal hepatic volume, central gland. Okay, and then you can see here this terminal hepatic volume. So we, the blood from here will be drained into the larger uh, vein, the subglobular vein. Okay. Okay, you can see the, how the blood flow is from the uh, uh, from the portal vein, right? So you can see here the, uh, the uh, from the portal vein here, and then going to the central here. So this is actually the form of the uh, class, classical lobule. Okay, right? Classical lobule is a hexagon. Actually, the classical lobule is try to describe how the blood flow from the uh, periphery toward the central. Okay. Okay, so this picture just to show you how the appearance of the central vein. Okay. Okay, for the portal canal, okay, portal canal it contains the portal triad. Lah. Okay, this is the portal component of the portal triad. We have the portal vein. So how you differentiate the portal vein from the hepatic artery? The portal vein usually it has larger lumen and thinner wall than the artery associated associated with it. Okay, for the hepatic artery, it has thick muscular wall. Heart artery usually it has a muscular thick muscular wall compared to the portal vein. Uh, it's thinner wall, okay, and larger lumen. But for the bulk duct, uh, it is lined by the simple cuboidal to the columnar epithelium. And the other thing that you have to remember hmm, also, uh, the portal canal also contains uh, the lymphatic vessels and also the nerve fiber. Okay, so from this picture you can see here this is the uh, portal. Portal canal lah, they contain the portal triad. We have the bulk duct here, the bulk duct uh, lined by the cuboidal, maybe it can be a cuboidal or columnar, uh, to columnar epithelium. Okay. And uh, we have the PV here is a portal vein. Okay. You can see the portal vein, uh, larger in a uh, larger lumen and thin wall. Okay. Compared to the hepatic artery, okay, smaller lumen, it has a thick muscular wall. Okay. Okay. There is the portal. Uh, portal triad. Okay, now we're going to move to the biliary tract. Okay, the biliary tract is the system of the conduit. Conduit is like a piping system. And this biliary tract is increasing diameter that bile flow from through the uh, uh, through from the hepatocyte okay, to the gallbladder and to the intestine. So there is the pathway from the hepatocyte increasing in diameter from the hepatocyte to the gallbladder to the intestine. So this is the biliary tract. Okay. So I think someone will be, uh, discuss on the uh, the, 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 the the pathway lah, from the canaliculi to the intra to the intrahepatic ductal or canal of herring to the larger uh, ducts which is the, which is the interlobular duct bulk duct yeah, in the portal canal and the interlobular bulk duct is located in the portal canal okay and then it going to the right and left hepatic duct okay and then uh, later it will go to the common hepatic duct okay. And then the common hepatic from the common hepatic duct go to the common bulk duct, uh, common bulk duct okay, and then combine with the component of the cystic duct, lah, okay. And then we have the uh, common bulk duct. We we'll join the membranous duct later. We we'll do here uh, later it will uh, merge. Uh, it will be appear at the this ampulla hepatopancreatic ampulla, okay. Hmm? Ampulla of better lah, okay. The CBD will join the membranous duct. Hmm? And then uh, later it will be uh, form a ampulla lah, okay? Ampulla or better, better than getting ampulla. And then open at the uh, second part of the duodenum, okay? uh, on the major uh, at the major duodenum papilla, okay? So this is the the pathway of the biliary tract. So you can see here, okay? This is the bulk duct, okay? The bulk duct, the bulk duct actually is the interlobular bulk duct They're located in the portal canal. And then we have the canal of hearing. Okay, bal canaliculus. Okay, bal canaliculus. It is a small canal that formed by the opposed groove in the surface of the adjacent hepatocyte. Okay, from the opposed groove in between the cell, we have the a small canal formed by the opposed groove in the surface of the hepatocyte. It forms a complete loops around the four side of the hepatocyte. So the, it forms a complete loops uh, around the four side of the hepatocyte. So you can see here this is the bal canaliculus. Okay, this is the bal canaliculus. This is the bal canaliculus. Okay, it surround the hepatocyte. Okay, and loops around the four side of the hepatocyte. 
it is isolated from the rest of the intercellular compartment by the touch junctions. Okay, so it is separated from the uh, cellular compartment by the touch junction. You can see here this touch junction here. Okay, the zonular occluded rights. Okay, the touch junctions. Okay, which are part of the junctional complex that also uh, that also include the zonular adherence and desmosomes. Uh, uh, not only touch junction, we also have the, the other junctional complex that we have the. Uh, zonula adherence and also this is muscle. Okay. Okay, the microbiology of two adjacent hepatocytes extend into the cardiomyocardial lumen. If you see here, there is the microbiology that uh, from the two adjacent hepatocytes that project into the cardiomyocardial. Uh, the microbiology. The bowel flow is centrifugal. Okay, example from the region of the central vein to the Opposite the direction of the blood flow that I have shown you just now, right? Okay, the blood flow. Uh, the, the blood flow is from here uh, to here, but it is opposite. Okay, from here to here. Okay, so uh, I think I have the picture just now. The, the, okay, this one you can see here the blood flow is from here, from the, here to here, right? To the, to the central vein, but the blood flow is from here to here. It's opposite. Okay. Uh, okay. Near the portal canal, but still within the lobule. Okay. Near the portal canal, but still within the lobule. Okay. Okay. Uh, bar canal 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 join to form the short. We have the uh, short lah. Only short lah. Short. Uh, intrahepatic ductal or canal of hearing. So you can see here short lah. Canal of hearing. Okay. So you can see here, this is the hepatocyte. It encircles in the hepatocyte, right? The bar canaliculus. Okay, you can see here. Okay, this is the uh, bile duct. Okay, we, uh, this bile duct will receive bile from the canaliculi. Okay, you can see here. This is the, the small small things here is in the uh, canaliculus. Okay, whenever you try to take out here, you can see this is the shape of the bile canaliculi. Okay. Okay, the angle here. This is the hexagon classical lobule, right? So at the angle of a portal, port, uh, here the, the portal triad here we have three components, right? The bulk duct, the port, uh, the the bulk duct, the green one, color one. We have the portal uh, portal vein or portal, portal venule, and also the portal atrium. Okay, and in the center we have the central vein. Okay. For, for the intrahepatic ductal, intrahepatic ductal is more larger, lah, okay, aligned with the cuboidal non hepatocytic cells. And the larger one is the interlobular bile duct, uh, form part of the portal triad. Okay, form part of the. Oh, sorry, this is a smaller one. Sorry. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Uh, the. Okay, the intrahepatic ductal, intrahepatic ductals, okay, align with the cuboidal non hepatocyte cell. Okay, just to correct my statement, okay, the intrahepatic ductal is a, uh, this one, okay, wait, wait, yeah. the intrahepatic ductal is a canal of hearing, the short component of the, the ducts that I have mentioned just now, okay. So definitely it's a larger than the uh, canaliculus lah. Okay, it's a, a larger, uh, larger than the uh, larger than the canaliculus. Okay, intrahepatic ductal is a uh, canal of herring. Okay, the canal of herring that I show you just now. Okay, sorry, I try to correct my words again. Eh? Okay, intrahepatic ductal is a canal of herring. Okay, the canal of herring is lined by the cuboidal non-hepatocytic. Okay, hepatocytic cell. Okay. Okay, uh, for the interlobular bile duct, it's more larger. Okay, just now we have discussed on the smaller one. It's a bile canaliculus. Okay, the smallest one, and then proceed with the intrahepatic ductal. Intrahepatic ductals is the uh, canal of herring. Okay, okay, larger compared to the bile canaliculus, and then we have the larger component here is the interlobular bile duct. Okay, for the interlobular bile duct, it's form part of the portal triad. Okay, that is the component of the portal triad. Okay, interlobular bile duct. Okay, the bile duct uh, that located between the lobule. Okay, interlobular bile duct. Okay. 
okay, form part of the process, right? And the interlobular bile duct is lined by the epithelium that gradually change from the cuboidal to the columnar. And the columnar cell have the well-developed microvilli. Okay, so you can see here, this is the interlobular bile duct, okay, the green one, color. Okay, and then we have a short segment of the canal of herring here. Okay, and then that we have the bile canal. I hope you can follow me lah. Okay. So we have the, just to recap back, we have the bile canaliculus, canaliculus, and then proceed with the intrahepatic ductal or canal of herring. And then we have the interlobular bile duct located, located within the portal triad. Lah. The form of a part of the component of the portal triad. Okay. Okay. Uh, as they get larger, gradually acquired a dense or connective tissue. Whenever it becomes larger in size, okay, so it will uh, acquire a uh, dense connective tissue lah, investment. Uh, not only that, we also uh, there is also uh, elastic fiber and also smooth muscle cell that present around the interlobular bile duct. Okay. And for the, so mean that there is, so, so uh, whenever it becomes larger lah, so this component will be appear lah, okay. So there will be a presence of the elastic fiber and also the smooth muscle cell that also part of the component of the uh, interlobular bile duct whenever it becomes large. Lah. And then uh, it will also acquire the connective tissue investment. Okay. Okay. For the, and then the larger portion, this is the larger one. Okay. The common hepatic duct. Okay. It becomes larger, larger, larger from smallest one to the larger one. Okay. For the common hepatic duct, it is about three centimeter long. It is lined uh, with a tall columnar epithelial cell and all the layers of the elementary canal are represented in the duct. Lah. Okay, so all the layer of the elementary canal are represented represented in the duct, except this one. The muscularis mucosa is absent. Okay, in the common hepatic duct. Okay, and the thickening of the muscularis external of the duodenum and the ampulla constitute the sphincter of the hepato pancreatic ampulla of odi. Okay, we have the sphincter of odi here. Okay, the thickening the uh, this sphincter of odi actually is due to the thickening of the muscularis external uh, of the duodenum. Okay, and the ampulla. Okay. okay, just now we have discussed on the uh, liver. Okay. And then now we're going to proceed uh, to the cold bladder. And also just uh, beside liver, we also uh, also discuss on the biliary tract as well. And now, now we're going to dis uh, proceed with the gall bladder. Okay, for the gall bladder, okay. Um, the component, okay, the layer of the gallbladder, we have the mucosal layer. Okay, the mucosal layer, it has numerous deep mucosal folds. So, I mean that the mucosal layer is not smooth. Lah. It has a numerous deep mucosal fold. It's a folding. Okay, you see from this picture, maybe I need to show you the picture here. So, you can see here, this is the uh, mucosal layer. So, mucosal layer, it is a folding. For, you can see that there is a folding structure here. Okay, it's not smooth, the mucosal layer. Okay. Uh, it is lined by the simple columnar epithelium with folding uh, following features. Okay, you can see here, simple columnar, simple means a single layer of the columnar epithelium. Okay, columnar epithelium is a columnar tall uh, epithelium. Okay, you can see that. Okay. Uh, this is the features of the mucosa. It has numerous well-developed apical microbilli. Definitely, if you see from this picture, there is a uh, microbilli. Okay, microbilli. Okay. Mm, something that project from the at the apical portion of the epithelium, and then the other things that you have to know that the apical junctions are complex that join the adjacent cell and form the barrier between the lumens and the intercellular compartment. So we have the apical junctional complex, okay, junctional complex lah, okay, that join the adjacent cell that between the cell, and then we have the apical junctional complex, and this. Uh, junctional complexes, it form the barrier between the lumen. So because we have the lumen, right? Uh, uh, the lumen here, you see here, the lumen here, right? Okay, okay, okay. So it will form a barrier between the lumen and the intercellular compartment. Okay, junctional complex. Okay, and then uh, localized concentration of the mitochondria in the apical and basal cytoplasm. Okay, there is a localized uh, concentration of the mitochondria. Mitochondria is concentrated uh, in the apical portion and also the basal cytoplasm. And uh, complex uh, lateral application. So this is the uh, the features of the mucosa of the core bladder. Okay. 
And um, uh, for the mucosa layer, we also have the lamina propria. For the lamina propria, it is uh, rich in the fenestrated capillary and small venule. Okay, so you can see uh, this is the uh, the epithelium. Okay, the columnar epithelium that I showed you just now. Okay, the lamina propria. So this this is the lamina propria. Okay, lamina propria. So just now I mentioned the lamina propria. Uh, it is rich in the fenestrated capillary and small venule. Okay, sometimes you can see the uh, capillary and venule in the lamina propria. Okay. Uh, but somehow, the most important thing that uh, lamina propria, okay, it's very cellular. Okay, the very cellular. You can see here, very cellular, right? Okay, you can see contain a lot of cell. And not only that, uh, uh, okay. Uh, very cellular. Okay, but somehow it does not have a lymphatic vessel here. Although they have a very rich capillary and small venue, but it does not have a lymphatic vessel. Okay, very cellular. Okay, containing large number of lymphocytes. Okay, just now I mentioned it contains a lot of number of lymphocytes in plasma cell. And there is a mucin secreting gland that is sometimes present, especially near the neck of a neck or in inflamed the inflamed called glomerular mucin secreting gland. Okay, so. This is the lamina propria. Okay. You can see here we have the connective tissue. Okay, so that is regarding the mucosal part. Okay, okay. The most important thing that regarding the gallbladder, you have to remember the wall of the gallbladder does not have a muscularis mucosa and submucosa. So it does not have the muscularis mucosa and submucosa. Okay, it does not have these two two layers. It does does not have these two layers. Uh, but somehow it has a muscularis externa. Okay, muscularis externa is external to lamina propria. Okay, it has numerous collagen and elastic fiber among the bundle of smooth muscle cells. The smooth muscle bundle are randomly oriented. Okay, if you go to go to the pictures. Okay, you can see here a bundle of smooth muscle cell. Right, this is the uh, muscularis externa. Okay, smooth muscle. Okay, muscularis externa. We have the bundle of smooth muscle cell. Okay, the smooth muscle is bundle. Uh, is a smooth muscle bundle is randomly oriented, and the contraction of smooth muscles here forcing content out through the cystic duct. Okay, that is the function of the uh, the mus uh, the smooth muscle in the muscularis externa because whenever it contract, it will expel out all the component that we have inside the contact. Okay. Hmm. So here you can see here uh, this is the mucosal layer. Okay. So, okay, the mucosa, we have the lamina propria, right? So, the lamina propria is very, very, what you call it, what you call it, uh, very cellular, okay, very cellular, okay? And then we have the muscularis externa, and then we have the, inside the muscularis externa, we have the smooth muscle layer, okay? Smooth muscle, sorry, smooth muscle, bundle of the smooth muscle, okay? Bundle of smooth muscle. Okay, and then for the adventitia, Okay, uh, adventitia is a thick layer of dense connective tissue. Okay, you can see here this is the adventitia. Okay, uh, thick layer of dense connective tissue and it rich in elastic fiber and adipose tissue. Okay, uh, so if here we have the uh, rich in elastic fiber and uh, adipose tissue, lah. and it contains the large blood vessels. Okay, okay, sometimes you can see there is a large blood, uh, large blood vessel here. You can see here. Okay, this is the large blood vessel. Uh, an extensive lymphatic network. Okay, the autonomic nerve, the cell body of the parasympathetic neuron, are found in the wall of the cystic duct. Okay, the adventitia where the gallbladder is attached to the liver lah, capsule. Okay, adventitia is actually where the gallbladder is attached to the liver capsule. Uh, we have the attached part and the unattached part lah. The attached part is uh, it will become an adventitia, but for the serosa, it is the unattached surface. Okay, unattached surface. They're covered by the visceral peritoneum that consists of the layer of the mesothelium and the thin layer of the loose connective tissue. Okay, so the attached part it becomes serosa, the attached part becomes the adventitia. Okay, okay, 
the gallbladder. The specific features of the gallbladder that is a present of the Rocky Tensky Ashcroft Ashcroft uh, sinuses. So you can see here this is the uh, erotic uh, Rocky Tensky Ashcroft sinuses. What is this Rocky Tensky Ashcroft uh, sinuses? It is a deep invagination of the diverticula of the mucosa extending into the muscularis externa. So whenever you see the, the presence of the Rocky Tensky Ashcroft sinuses, so mean that you know this. This these features, uh, these uh, sections, uh, uh, histological section is belong to the gallbladder. Okay. Now we're going to uh, proceed with pancreas. So just now we have discussed on the liver, we really track, we have discussed on the gallbladder, okay, the fourth component, the last component is the pancreas. Okay, maybe uh, I, will, I will touch on the, a little bit on the, the gross component of the pancreas first. Okay, so the gross component of the pancreas, so the pancreas is located in function, uh, okay, now we can discuss on the location in the function of the pancreas. Okay, the pancreas, it is elongated, it is elongated, right? Elongated accessory, accessory digestive gland. Okay, it's accessory digestive gland. It is it lies transversely. Okay, definitely it lies transversely. And the thing that you have to remember uh, right, right about pancreas, it is a retroperitoneal organ. Okay, it is a retroperitoneal organ. Okay, I hope you know what is the retroperitoneal means. Okay, retroperitoneal means that it's not. Uh, it's a partially covered only by the peritoneum. Partial, only partially covered by the peritoneum. It's not fully covered. It's partially covered by the peritoneum. Only the, the front part is covered by the peritoneum. Okay? Uh, so, uh, the pancreas, it formed the part of the stomach pen. Okay? So, it formed the part of the stomach pen. Uh, the function of the pancreas, uh, these are the, the, it has two functions, the exocrine secretion, and endocrine secretion. For exocrine secretion, it secretes the pancreatic juice. Endocrine secretion, it secretes the glucagon and also the insulin. Okay, for the relation of the pancreas, on the right side, we have the uh, duodenum. Definitely on the right side, we have the duodenum. On the left side, we have the spleen. Okay, anterior margin, there is attachment. In the, the anterior margin, there is attachment of the transverse mesocolon. You can see here, in the anterior margin, we have the attachment of the transverse mesocolon. This is the transverse mesocolon. At the upper border, if you see here, here the, at the upper border here, we have the tortuous splenic artery. You can see here, at the upper border, we have the tortuous splenic artery. Behind, okay, whenever you cut uh, the spankers here, there is a, uh, you can see at the behind, at the back there, we have, there is a formation of the portal vein, how the portal vein is being formed, okay? Okay, so you can see here, this is the attachment of the transverse mesocolon. Okay, uh, on the right side, we have the duodenum. On the left side, we have the spleen. And at the uh, upper border here, we have the uh, tortuous spleen artery. Okay. And the part of the pancreas, we have uh, the pancreas, it has four parts. It has head, neck, and body, and tail. For the body part, the body part, uh, it is uh, the broadest part, okay, the largest part. Okay. It, uh, it lies in the C shirt curve of the descending part of the denim. So you can see here, this is the C-shaped curve of the descending part of the denim. So it lies within this C-shaped curve, okay? And it attached to the descending, it attached to the descending and horizontal part of the denim, okay? And we have the uncinate process of the head. This is the uncinate process of, of the head of the pancreas. Hmm? So you can see here, this is the uncinate process, huh? okay? For the uh, head of the pancreas, okay. This is the head. Uh, this is the head. This is the duodenum, okay. Descending part of the duodenum. This is the horizontal part of the duodenum, okay. This is the neck. This is the body. This is the tail, okay. For the relation of the head of the pancreas, okay. Uh, left side, okay. Uh, the uh, relation of the head of the pancreas on the left side, we have the superior mesenteric vessel. Okay, so you can see here, if you remove this one, you can see there is a superior mesenteric vessel. Okay, this, uh, there are two components of the mesenteric vessel here, the superior mesenteric vein and also the superior mesenteric artery. Okay, on the left side, uh, okay, on the left side. it is related with the superior mesenteric vessel. On the posterior part, on the posterior, if you remove uh, this part, you can see there is a inferior vena cava. This is the inferior vena, vena cava, okay. So it is related with the posterior vena, uh, inferior vena cava, posterior linear. And the right renal artery, you can see, okay. Right renal artery, we have the right renal artery. And also the vein, the vein we have cut, cut off, okay, yeah. Left renal, uh, left, uh, 
right renal artery, okay, right renal artery, and also the right renal vein, okay, on the, the back of the uh, head of the pancreas. And also the left renal vein, also associated with the poster, uh, head of the pancreas on the posterior part, okay. And posterior superior, okay, posterior superior, we have the bagap. So we can see here, posterior superior, we have the Okay, uh, posterior relation of the head of the pancreas. Uh, okay, all the components that I have mentioned just now. Okay. Okay, the uncinate process of the pancreas, the uncinate process of the uh, of the head. Uh, uh, actually, it's uh, from the inferior part of the head, from the inferior part of the head. Uh, so it forms the uncinate process. It extends medially to the left. Okay, uh, it extends medially going to the toward the left. Okay. Uh, this uncinate process actually is uncinate process located posterior to the superior mesenteric vessel. Okay, the superior mesenteric vessel will will uh, passing in front to the uncinate uh, process. Okay, so this is the superior mesenteric uh, vein. This is the superior mesenteric artery. So when, whenever you cut this artery and vein, you can you, uh, you can exp uh, actually you expose the uncinate process of the head. Okay, uncinate process of the head is actually uh at the back of these two vessels okay and then for the neck okay for the neck for the neck here it is short it's a, a short narrow part it lies in front of the superior mesenteric artery and vein so at the back of this neck we have the superior mesenteric artery and uh, superior mesenteric artery the red the red color one and the superior, superior mesenteric vein okay it lies anterior to the in front of this, this, uh, these vessels, okay, adjacent to the pilaris part of the stomach, okay, so it's located near to the uh, pilaris part of the stomach. Uh, at the neck of the pancreas, there is a, a, actually the neck of the pancreas is the site of formation of the portal vein. So you can see here, the portal vein is being formed, okay, here. Uh, at the lower margin, the superior mesenteric vein is embraced uh, between the neck and uncinate process okay at the lower margin the supreme mesenteric vein okay this is the supreme mesenteric vein huh? okay you can see here this is the supreme mesenteric vein okay this is the supreme mesenteric vein okay the supreme mesenteric, mesenteric vein is embraced between the neck of between the neck and also the uncinate process okay okay this is the supreme mesenteric vein Okay, for the body of the pancreas, the anterior surface uh, cover, covered with the peritoneum. That's why I told you the, the, in the early part of my presentation, I mentioned that this uh, pancreas actually is the retroperitoneum again because only, it's only partially covered by the peritoneum, only the anterior surface. Uh, the anterior surface, it lies in the floor of the omental bursa. Okay, it lies in the floor of the omental bursa. And the body of the pancreas, it forms the stomach pain. On the posterior surface, okay, the posterior surface of the body of the pancreas, it does not have, it does not covered by the peritoneum, it does not have the peritoneum. And here we have the iota. You can see here whenever you remove the pancreas right at the back there, we have the uh, iota, and we also have the uh, superior mesenteric artery. You can see here this is the superior mesenteric artery, and then we have the left suprarenal gland, okay, uh, and we also have the. Uh, this is, this is the left suprarenal gland, in the, uh, the yellow color one here. Okay, this is the kidney, left kidney. And then we have the left kidney, okay. And then we have the left renal artery, okay, and vein. Okay, these are the associated components that are located in the process surface of the uh, body of the pancreas. At the upper border here, we have the tortuous splenic artery. Uh, <coughs> joining of the inferior mesenteric vein with the splenic vein. So uh, at the back there, at the back of the body of the uh, body of the pancreas, we have the joining part of the inferior mesenteric vein and also the splenic vein. Okay, for the tail of the pancreas. Okay, so this is the tail of pancreas. Uh, it is located anterior to the 
left kidney. So you can see here, this is the left kidney, right? And it's integrated the left kidney. It lies within the spinorenal ligament. It lies within the, the ligament, the spinorenal ligament. Okay, with the splenic vessels and the vessel vessels located within this ligament. Okay, and this tail of pancreas is relatively mobile. Okay, relatively mobile because it lies within the this ligament. So relatively mobile. And the tail of pancreas it is closely related to the hilum of the liver. So this is the hilum of the liver it's because it moves toward the hilum of the liver, right? So it closely related to the hilum of the. Sorry, 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 sorry. I I I will I correct my uh, statement. The hilum of the spin. Sorry. Not hilum of the liver, sorry, the hilum of the spleen. So it it is closely related to the uh, hilum of the spleen. Okay, the uh, <coughs> the purple color of the structure here is actually is the spleen. Okay, the spleen. Okay, so the uh, the tail of pancreas it closely uh, related to the hilum of the spleen. So this is the hilum of the spleen. Okay, okay. So then I correct my words again. Okay, I hope that you can uh, follow my um, correction part. Okay, uh, this tail of pancreas is closely related to the hilum of the spleen. This is the the purple, the purplish color of the structure here. Organ here is actually actually is the spleen. So this is the the hilum of the spleen. Okay, so okay, please remember this is this this is the spleen. I correct my statement. Okay, so it is closely related to the hilum of the spleen. Okay. And not only that, it also uh, closely related to the left colic fracture of the uh, thrombus colon. Left colic fracture of the thrombus colon. Okay, for the pancreatic ducts. Okay, main pancreatic duct of the uh, main duct of the pancreatic or uh, reasons. Okay, it begins from the tail here uh, to the head of the pancreas. Okay. It will unite. Uh, uh, it unite with bile duct to form the hepatopancreatic ampulla. So it's slightly in the lighter portion here, hepatopancreatic ampulla, and it open into the second part of the descending part of the duodenum. Okay, open here. Second, the, the open at the second part of the duodenum or descending part of the duodenum, at, at the major duodenal papilla. So there is the slightly dilated area, uh, dilated, slightly uh, protruding area here, and this is the major duodenal papilla. Okay. Uh, so that is the main pancreatic duct, main duct of the pancreas. Eh? Okay. And hepatopancreatic ampulla here, hepatopancreatic ampulla, okay, the dilated portion here, it is short, it's the dilated area. Okay. Uh, the sphincter around my main, pan, uh, main duct of the pancreas, we have the three sphincter here, we have the sphincter of the pancreatic duct, okay, number one, you can see sphincter of the uh, pancreatic duct, number two, we have the sphincter of the bowel duct, okay, that surround the uh, Muscle that's uh, this muscle that concentrate uh, around the uh, com com common blood duct, and then the sphincter of the hepatopancreatic ampulla number three here. Okay. Okay. Uh, the sphincter or smooth muscle that concentrate around the hepatopancreatic ampulla. Okay. And then we also have the accessory pancreatic duct of Santorini. So you can see here, this is the accessory pancreatic duct that drain the uncinate process and the lower part of the head. Okay. And the accessory pancreatic duct, it communicates with the major pancreatic ducts in 60% of cases. So you can see here, it communicates with the major pancreatic duct in 60% of cases. And the uh, accessory pancreatic duct will open at the summit called the minor dendronal papilla. So we, just now we have the major dendronal papilla, right? Okay, we also have the minor dendronal papilla. The location of opening is only two centimeters proximal to the major dendronal papilla. Just above the, the opening is just above the major dendronal papilla. This is major dendronal papilla, above, above here. So, possibly we have the minor dendronal papilla, two centimeters proximal to the major dendronal papilla. For the development of the pancreatic duct, <laughs> the ventral bud, uh, maybe someone ha will discuss this part later. Okay, just to recap back what someone has mentioned to you. Early, okay. How the pancre pancreas is being is developed? Okay. Uh, the pancreas, huh? the development of pancreas involves two but the ventral part and dorsal part. The ventral part develops into the low, uh, develops into the, the lower part of the head and synapse process. So you can see here, this is the ventral part. Okay, ventral pancreas. Okay, this ventral part will develop into the lower part of the head and also the synapse process. And for the dorsal pancreas or dorsal bud here, it develops into the upper part of the pancreas and the body tail of the pancreas. 
Okay, the denim then rotate to the right. And the clockwise, uh, ventral bud will align, uh, posterior to the dorsal plantar bud, duct of the dorsal bud from the accessory uh, plantar duct. Okay, I think uh, someone will telling you how the how the uh, duct is actually is being developed. Okay. So papilla is a nipple-like structure, ampulla is a dilated portion of the duct. So there is just a definition that you, uh, you need to know now. Okay, for the blood supply of the pancreas, the arterial supply, it, the, for the head, it receives blood supply from the uh, gastro the artery that give rise, rise, uh, give rise a branch to the superior pancreatal the artery. Okay, for the head, uh, it is supplied by the superior pancreatal the artery, uh, that uh, branch from the gastro artery. And the superior pancreatal the artery will branch further into the anterior and posterior branches. And it also receives a blood supply from the superior mesentery artery uh, through uh, this artery, the inferior pancreatic artery, artery. Because this inferior pancreatic artery, artery is actually is branched off from the, the superior mesentery artery. And this one, the inferior pancreatic artery, artery, also branched into the anterior and posterior branches. For the neck, body, and tail, it will receive a blood supply from the spinal artery. For the venous drainage, it for, uh, <coughs> tributaries of the spinal and superior mesentery vein it drain into the portal vein. So you can see here, this is the um, gastro artery that we give. Uh, okay, you can see here, this is the, uh, okay, this is the posterior, superior, pancreatal dedenal artery. Uh, this is the, actually, okay. Uh, okay, this is the posterior view. Okay, it's very hard uh, to explain to you all mm, here. But, okay, try to imagine this is the posterior view. This is the anterior view, okay? This is the posterior view. So the posterior view, you only can you can you only can see the posterior branches of the superior pancreatal duodenal artery. So this is the posterior posterior superior pancreatal duodenal artery. Okay? Posterior branches of the superior pancreatal duodenal artery, okay? And so this is the uh, gastro duodenal artery. This one. This is the okay. So I correct my correct my statement again. Okay, just to highlight here. Okay, so this is the posterior view. Okay, this is the this is the anterior view. Okay, so from this uh, picture, okay, you can see this is the branch. Uh, this is the gastrodenal artery. This gastrodenal artery will give uh, branch to the superior pancreatal duodenal artery. So this is the superior pancreatal duodenal artery. And this superior pancreatal, superior pancreatal duodenal artery will, will branch off into the, uh, the posterior branch and this is the anterior branch. Okay? Okay. So right now I already make corrections to the picture just to make you clear lah because some of the component of the picture may be slightly confusing. Okay, so you can see here this is the this is the gastro artery. Okay, maybe the the way that the arrow is actually slightly uh, not correct or not uh, not not correct. So I have corrected the the the, the arrow just now. Okay, so I record back. What I have mentioned just now, okay, this is the posterior view, this is the anterior view, okay. So, this is the gastro artery, okay. You can see here the gastro artery, it gives branch to the uh, post the posterior superior pancreatal artery, okay. And then, uh, this is this is another. This is another artery. If you see there at the back there, at the back here, we have the anterior superior pancreatal duodenal artery. Maybe this uh, arrow also is a bit, a bit uh, run, runs, I mean, it's a bit uh, not correct at the point that, you, you do want, that, I, that it want to show. Okay. Okay. Wait, huh? Okay. Yeah, okay. Right now, I already correct the, the, the way the arrow is actually pointed to. So you can see here, this is the anterior, uh, the anterior superior pancreatal duodenal artery, and the uh, posterior superior pancreatal duodenal artery also the, the 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 arrow also slightly not correct. Okay, I'm going to correct 
the arrow. Okay, so right now, so you can see here, it's more clear. Okay, so this is the correct part of the statement. Uh. Okay. Okay, after I correct uh, all the arrow, because the arrow is actually is not, she should be pin pinpoint to the, uh, the, the the part that we want to show because just now the arrow may be slightly away from the, uh, the, 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 the structure. So I have correct the, all the things here. So I kept recap back and I correct back what, uh, what I have uh, telling you just now in the early part. Okay, so this is the correct part of the statement. Okay, this is the anti review. This is the post review. So you can see here, this is the gastro the donor artery. Okay, okay, maybe the, in the early part, the, this is slightly what I call that confusion, uh, confusing part because uh, the the arrow is slightly away from the 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 part that we want to show you. Okay, okay, you can see here, this is the gastro gastro the donor artery. So the from the gastro the donor artery, it gives rise and branches branch to the <coughs> to the uh, superior parenchymal donor artery, and then uh, superior will give give rise into two branches, which at the back here we have the posterior superior parenchymal donor artery, and the front here we have the you can see the faded color part here. Faded color is actually represent the structure uh, beyond this uh, pancreas. So you can see here at the back there, uh, the back there we have the anterior superior parenchymal donor artery. So this is the, actually the correct pinpoint of the arrow that I I have already corrected okay, in this uh, picture. Okay, sorry for the, the confused part, early part of the picture. So this is the correct part of the picture. Okay, I have correct, okay. So definitely, uh, okay, the head part that I have telling you just now, okay, it received a blood supply from this uh, gastrodinary artery and that gives branch to the superior parenchymal artery and the superior parenchymal artery it will give branch into the posterior branches and the anterior branches, okay. And posterior branches going to the back, anterior branches going to the front there. Okay, and then we have the superior mesenteric artery, which gives rise branches to the uh, anterior inferior parenchymal artery, the faded color one, this one, and the posterior inferior parenchymal artery. So if you see here, it forms the uh, anastomosing loop, right? You can see here anastomosing loop. So, so it, it, it continues, it forms a uh, anastomos. Okay, so. Uh, Please follow this picture. This is the corrected one that I have corrected just now. Okay, maybe the early part is slightly confused. Just omit whatever I have mentioned early, and this is the final part. That after I correct all the, the the the, I have I correct all the pinpoint or the arrow just now. Okay, please follow the statement that I have uh, that I have uh, explained to you just now. Okay. Okay. Uh, for the branches of the celiac trunk, I think I have mentioned early during my early part of my lecture. Maybe someone also have telling regarding this one. The branches of the celiac trunk. We have three branches that arise from the celiac trunk. We have the left gastric artery. Uh, we have the splenic artery. We have the common hepatic artery. Okay. And the branches of the superior and inferior mesenteric artery. Okay. The superior mesenteric artery it gives rise branches to the inferior parenchymal donor artery that I already show you just now. And then the inferior mesenteric artery, it gives this, uh, if give branches to this artery, okay, okay. So this one you can read on your own later. Okay, this is just to show you what are the branches that arise from the celiac trunk and the branches that arises from the specific artery that I have mentioned just now, okay. Okay, uh, actually this part is not related to the pain, the topic that I'm going to touch today regarding the pancreas, okay. Okay, for the lymphatic drainage of the pancreas, okay, the lymphatic vessel follow the blood vessel. This is the most important thing, okay. Lymphatic vessel follow the blood vessel. Most of the uh, li uh, li uh, the lymphatic drainage will end in the pancreato, pancreatico splenic knot uh, along the splenic artery, okay. Most of, of the vessel will end at the uh, pancreatico splenic knots along the splenic vessel. So you can see here, this is the pancreatico, uh, pan pancreatico, uh, pancreatico, this is splenic knots uh, that located along the splenic artery. And the efferent knots uh, will drain into the celiac lymph node, the celiac lymph node, and number one here, and also drain into the hepatic lymph node, number two, and then number three, superior mesenteric lymph node. Okay. That is regarding the lymphatic drainage of the pancreas. For the nerve of pancreas, uh, for the parasympathetic uh, vagal nerve uh, from the posterior vagal trunk, uh, and then uh, to the 
uh, for the for, uh, for, uh, for the parasympathetic vagus vagal nerve uh, from the posterior vagal trunk and also from the celiac plexus. And uh, the important of this parasympathetic trunk, asympathetic vagal nerve is actually is to stimulate the exocrine secretion. Okay, for the sympathetic, okay, sympathetic uh, thoracic splanchic nerve. Uh, the splanchic nerve and also the sonic plexus. Everything will go to the sonic plexus. Lah. This is the the the, the, uh, the, the how we call it, uh, can say it's, uh, it's titik pertemuan, lah, something like that, sonic plexus. Okay. Uh, for the sympathetic uh, splanchic nerve, it derived from the T6 to T10 of the spinal cord segment. Okay. Okay. The autonomic plexus pass along the artery. Okay. You can see here the autonomic plexus is, will pass along the artery. We follow the artery, right? Okay, the duct system of the exocrine pancreas. Okay, this is the ductal system of the exocrine pancreas. From the central axial cell to the intercalated duct, to the, it will go to the, toward the larger duct, which is the intralobular duct, and then in the interlobular duct. The interlobular duct, either it will go to the accessory pancreatic duct or main pancreatic duct. For the main pancreatic duct, later, it will join this common bound duct to form the uh, to form the hepatic pancreatic ampulla or better, and then it will open up at the major denial papilla. For the uh, accessory pancreatic duct, it will open up at the minor denial papilla. Okay. Okay. For uh, for the pancreas itself, uh, the exocrine pancreas. Okay, the exocrine pancreas. Uh, it is a composed of compound tubular alveolar serous gland. Uh, composed of compound tubular alveolar serous gland. Uh, the connective tissue capsule will send septum to divide the parenchyma into lobule. Okay, the connective tissue capsule okay, will send it uh, deep into the, the pancreas. Uh, uh, and then it will form a septum to divide the parenchyma into a lobule. The acinus is a serous type. Okay, the acinus is serous type. It is composed of a several pyramidal shaped cell with the round nuclei. I hope you can. Uh, I hope you have a picture here. You can see here. Okay, this is the acinus cell. It's a pyramidal in shape, right? Okay, uh, pyramidal in shape. Okay, a serous type. Okay, round nuclei. Definitely a round nuclei. Okay, and then uh, uh, the acinus here. The acinus it has a basophilic uh, basal cytoplasm. It has a basophilic basal cytoplasm, but here it's not very obvious. Okay, just the the basal cytoplasm is a basophilic cytoplasm. Okay, but somehow the acidophilic zygomagen granules at the acid apical cytoplasm. Okay, at the apical portion here, you can see here there is a granule. The small small thing actually is the granule. It's a pinkish in color. Okay, acidophilic zygomagen. Zymogen, sorry. Zymogen granule. Okay, zymogen granule. Hmm? Zymogen. Correct, correct back my words. Lah, huh? Okay. <coughs> the the top system of the exocrine pancreas. The, the central acinal cell. Okay, the central acinal cell. So you can see here, this is the central acinal cell. The, it's part of the duct system of the exocrine pancreas, the central axinal cell. Actually, the central axinal cell is the beginning of the duct system of the exocrine pancreas. It's the beginning of the ductal system of the pancreas. This is the central axinal cell, okay? The beginning of the ductal system of the pancreas. Located in, in, the, uh, in the center of the axinus, in the center, this is the axinus, right? So in the center, we have the uh, central axinal cell, okay? The nucleus is centrally placed. So definitely, if you see here, this is the cell, right? The nucleus is centrally placed. Okay, the cytoplasm is pale. Okay, you can see here, this is the central axinal cell, right? The cytoplasm is pale, right? Compared to the axinal cell. Okay, the uh, it is a typical of squamous cell, lah. Yeah, definitely, it's a, a typical shape of the squamous cell. And uh, it continues with the cell of the intercalated duct. So it continues with the cell of the intercalated duct. So this is the intercalated duct. Okay. So you can see here, this is the central acinal cell that continues with the intercalated duct. This is the acinus and with the acinal cell. Okay. Okay. The intercalated duct it lies outside the acinus. Okay. The special about the intercalated duct is lie outside the uh, acinus. Okay. The intercalated duct. Intercalated duct. Okay. Short. Lined by the simple squamous epithelium. Okay, simple squamous epithelium. 
it drain into the intralabular collecting duct. Okay, this is the intralabular collecting duct. Okay. Okay. There are no striated uh, duct in the pancreas. This is the most important thing that you have to remember. There are no striated duct in the pancreas. For the intralabular duct, okay, intralabular duct, this is the intralabular duct. Uh, it is complex and branch, uh, lined by the simple cuboidal cell. Okay, you can see here it's lined by the simple cuboidal cell, single layer cuboidal shaped cell. Okay, uh, surrounded by the thin layer of cognitive tissue, it drain into drain into the larger interlobular duct. The okay, intralobular duct will drain into the larger interlobular duct. Okay, I think I don't have a picture of the interlobular duct. Okay, okay, for the interlobular duct, it lined with a simple uh, by the it lined by a simple column, low columnar epithelium in which the inter, intro endocrine cell and occasional goblet cell may be found. Uh, the interlobular duct is located in the interlobular septum, surrounded by the thicker layer of the connective tissue. And it drains directly into the main pancreatic duct. So from the interlobular duct, it drains directly into the main pancreatic duct. Okay, I don't have a picture of the interlobular duct. Okay. Um, I don't have a picture of the interlobular duct. Okay. Okay. And so the main thing that you have to remember the main pancreatic duct and the accessory pancreatic duct is lined by the simple columnar epithelium. Okay. This is the larger duct. Eh? The main pancreatic duct and accessory pancreatic duct. Okay. The line uh, lined by the simple columnar epithelium. Okay. The interlobular duct, simple low columnar, but here is lined by a simple columnar epithelium for the larger duct. Eh? Okay. Okay. That is the endocrine, ex, exocrine, exocrine part of the pancreas. Exocrine, uh, it secretes the enzyme. Okay. For the endocrine pancreas, it is composed of the island of Langehan cell, the uh, okay, endocrine component of the pancreas, the island of Langehan. Okay. The islet constitute of 1 to 2% of the volume of the pancreas, a small amount only, okay, endocrine pancreas, 1 or 2% of the volume of the pancreas. Okay. The individual islet may contain only a few cells or may hundred of cells. Okay. Contain only a few number of cells or maybe hundred of cells. Uh, their shape is polygon, polygonal shape cell. Okay, polygonal means the multiple shape. Lah. It arranged in a short irregular cord and profuse invested with a not more of penetrated capillary. Uh, this, this is a picture you touch, just to show you the exocrine. Eh? This is the exocrine, exocrine pancreas. Okay. With the acinus, okay, with the acinus cell. Okay. Okay, you can see here this is the acinus, okay, with the zygomagen granule at the apical portion. Okay. And this is the island of Langehan. You can see here, this is the island of Langehan. Uh, in H and E standing section, the island of Langehan appears as a cluster of pale standing cell. So you can see here, it is a composed of the pale standing cell, pale in color, uh, that's surrounded by more instant, intensely standing pancreatic acinus. So it's surrounded, sur uh, the surrounding part here is the acinus that have that has a intense in color. Can okay, compare to the island of Langehan cell, right? This pale in color, right? Okay. After uh, after Applying the Zenker formal fixation and standing by the Mallory as a method, so you can possibly uh, to identify the three principal cell. Okay, we have the alpha cell, beta cell, and delta cell. So you can see here, this is the alpha cell, this is the um, beta cell, and this is the uh, delta cell, the blue color. Okay, this is the island of Langehan. Okay, I hope you enjoy the the presentation. Okay, anything that uh, I have correct. Uh, regarding my statement, I hope you can follow what what, I, what are the things that I have correct on on my statement. Okay, that's all. Thank you.